ladies and gentlemen, this is open source and today we are going to see how Cytrans was made in the 90s. Nineties was the time when Cytrans actually formed as a subgenre. Psychedelic trance or Cytrans derives from the Greek word psyche, which means soul, and from the word trance, which means ecstasy. One of the very first terms used to describe the genre was Goa trance because this music was first played in Goa, India, where the hippies went for vacation during the 60s and the 70s. The hippie way of living postulated natural environment, beaches, low cost of living, religious beliefs, spirituality and drugs. All of that were available and still are in Goa, India. The gathering of the hippies and the parties that took place in Goa draw there the most popular psychedelic rock bands including Pink Floyd, The Doors and others. In the late 70s and early 80s we had the industrial revolution of the electronics and Goa was affected by the electronic dance music as every other place on earth. Instead of live bands we had DJs spinning records. The people applaud the medium, the DJs, instead of the musicians. Lyrics were chopped, beats got harsher, melodies were looped, speedy bass lines and filter effects were added. Those new tracks were presented to the public as trance music. New horizons opened as people with no talent or skills took part of the new mutant hippie movement. It was the era of the disc jockeys. And through them, the trance scene picked up a pulse of its own. Seeking a following, more artists were constantly showing up, sharing their passion for trance music. Even celebrity DJs joined the movement and propelled Goa trance farther mainstream. In the mid-90s, the genre changed so much from its Goa roots that the term Goa trance could not longer describe the variety of tracks being produced. A new term was invented, psychedelic trance or psy trance for short, was coined to refer to the new style of music. Now, it is common knowledge that the genre was mastered in Israel by Israeli producers Young kids with their home computers build on the idea and they manage to take it on a whole different level. So Goa trance might be originated in India, but psychedelic trance is originated in Israel. Psy trance was initially made with synthesizers that were all samplers for the most part. By the early 90s, samplers had become reasonably affordable for any artist along with inexpensive analog gear. Some of the most famous synths used for making Psytrance in the early 90s were the Korg M1 synthesizer and music workstation manufactured by Korg from 1988 to 1995. It became the world's top-selling digital synthesizer of its time. The Nordlead series of virtual analog subtractive synthesizer manufactured by Clavia released in 1994. The Yamaha SY99 synthesizer combining frequency modulation synthesis and sample based synthesis which was the direct successor to Yamaha's SY77 which was used for making electronic music the previous decades such as house, disco, synthwave and so on. The Roland GP8000, an analog modeling synthesizer released by the Roland Corporation in 1996. At the same time we had the trackers. The term tracker derives from Ultimate Sound Tracker, the first tracker software ever written by Karsten Obarski and released in 1987 for the Amiga Commodore. 
trackers were nothing else but a basic type of music sequencer for creating music. During the 90s, tracker musicians gravitated to the PC as software production in general switched from the Amiga platform to the personal computer. Although the IBM and compatibles initially lacked the hardware sound processing capabilities of the Amiga, with the advent of the Sound Blaster series from Creative, PC Audio catch up and eventually preceded. Popular trackers during the 90s were Screen Tracker 3 and Fast Tracker 2 on the PC and on to Amiga Commodore 64. Impulse Tracker on the PC and Med Sound Studio on the Amiga and later on PC. Amiga even had a tracker called Symphony Pro that supported 256 channels. Let's have a look at a DOS based tracker. As you can see, music is represented as discrete musical notes positioned in several channels on a vertical timeline. The user's interface is usually number based. Notes, parameters, effects are entered with a keyboard into a grid of fixed time slots as codes consisting of letters, numbers and digits. Separated patterns have independent timelines and a complete song consists of a master list of repeated patterns. New trackers were built for the world's dominating operating system, Windows. The tracker that was widely used in Greece and Israel for making side trance, uplifting trance, niche or not, and trance in general, was Mad Tracker. Let's have a closer look at the most common software used in the late 90s for making side trance, the Mad Tracker.
what about those? People did use those in the early to mid 90s, but the few those that existed, like Pro Tools, were mainly used by professionals. That is because the processing power of the computers was not enough to handle the digital signal processing that the DAW needs, and hard drives were not fast enough to stream audio in real time, so DAW systems required high-end hardware. In 1991, Pro Tools was released, which was a DAW that could record and playback both MIDI and audio with up to four simultaneous audio tracks. Pro Tools was the first widely popular DAW in professional studios. Home computer users didn't generally use DAWs until the late 90s. Bedroom producers stick with trackers on the Amiga or the PC. In 1995, Cakewalk was one of the very few MIDI sequencers at the time. Cubase, developed by Steinberg for music and MIDI recording, arranging and editing. The first version, which was originally only a MIDI sequencer that ran on the Atari ST computer, was released in 1989. Cubase 3.7, released in 1999, introduced a virtual instrument interface known as VSTI. This made possible for third-party software programmers to create and sell virtual instruments for Cubase. The technology has become a standard for other DAWs, for integrating software-based instruments on the Mac and Windows platforms. So those did not become available to the home user until the late 90s and it wasn't until the early 2000s that VST started to displace DirectX on Windows as the most popular plugin format. Let's have a closer look at FL Studio 2 released in November 1999 which supported DirectX plugins and live recording. released in 2001. Propellerhead Reason was released in 2001. Garage Band was initially released in January 2004. Reaper by Cocos was initially released in August 2006. 
Logic Pro, a very popular digital audio workstation for the macOS platform, was originally created in the early 90s by the German developer C-Lab, later renamed to eMagic. It became an Apple product eventually known as Logic Pro after Apple bought eMagic in 2002. But we entered the new millennium and the rest are history as you know it. I hope you enjoyed our little tour in the past. Thanks for watching.